up, people? It's your girl, Adela. So we're starting with some inspirational stories that we're hoping will warm your heart. Before we get to the latest news, sorry, but sometimes the news can be depressing. <laughs> we don't want you to be depressed watching this show, so we're going to start with some uplifting stories. Our first shout-out of today goes to an amazing man, 33-year-old John Sunday Amana, who has turned tragedy into an opportunity to change lives and bring smiles into people's faces. We're so excited about this, brother. Thank you so much, brother. Last Sunday, we appreciate you. Apologies in advance, by the way, because some viewers may find the pictures that we will be showing, they may find them jarring. It's not graphic at all, but they, they, may, be, they may be jarring to some people. So if you're eating, maybe this is not a time to eat while you're watching this, you know? So anyway, back to our story. John used to be a movie special effects expert. He's really good. But then when his brother got in an accident that claimed some of his fingers, they couldn't find a prosthetic hand that looked like the complexion of his brother. They found mainly white ones. His brother wasn't happy about this. The white finger on a black man's body was raising too many eyebrows. And of course, his brother was not alone in this struggle. In Africa, it's hard to find prosthetic that would look like the same complexion as a black person. It's mostly white. So there are not many out there made for black people. So that's a huge problem. So most prosthesis in Africa would come in white or would be made of wood, both of which are not very realistic for black people. In fact, black people everywhere, not just in Africa. You know, like this black woman in uh, Canada who couldn't find prosthesis in her complexion. So his brother was not alone, but then John decided to do something about it. He decided to use his skills in doing makeup and special effects for movies. He decided to use that to make hyper-realistic fingers that would look like his brother's complexion for his brother. Little did he realize that there's a huge market for black people who need body parts that look like their complexion. And so he now makes realistic prosthetics that match the skin color of the people that need it. Depending on the size and complexity of the prosthetic, it could take three weeks to two months to make one. And the best part of this is that his price starts from 40,000 Naira upward, which is about $104. That's the starting price. That's not like how he charges for everything, but that's way cheaper than most prosthetic companies would charge. So not only was he able to help his brother, today he has helped so many people who have lost limbs. In fact, he has started his own company out of doing this. His company's name is called Imoto Cosmetic Art. We're so proud of what he's doing. This is literally changing lives, putting smiles on people's faces and giving them their confidence back. Shout out to you, my brother. Thank you so much. And of course, our second shout out of the day goes all the way to the country of Sudan, where for the first time they have a film that is in the running for best international feature film. Mm -hmm. This is also the first feature film produced in over 20 years in Sudan. There have only been about seven feature films ever produced in Sudan. So this movie was directed by Amja Abu Alala who said that he wanted to see how stories can be told within Sudan. The film's title is You Would I at 20. Mm -hmm, I know, sorry, it's... <laughs> about that title but it's actually a very good movie based on how superstitious beliefs are affecting many lives in Africa. It's about a child that was just born and in the middle of blessing the child while the village leaders were trying to bless the child as a baby a guest fell over and died and because of that the village leader said that that was a sign that the boy that was being blessed that they would die at the age of 20 and guess what everybody believed it. He lived all his life asking for forgiveness for a he never committed. The mother was wearing black. She was mourning, waiting for him to die. The entire village called him the child of death. He didn't have any friends. You have to watch the movie to know whether he died at 20 or not. But it's a very powerful movie. And we're going to put the link to the trailer in the description. Please, at least watch the trailer. The film has gotten several good reviews from the New York Times, the LA Times, among others. This movie would make you question some things that you believe growing up without even knowing why you believe what you believed. It will make you start questioning some beliefs. Congratulations to Sudan. We're so proud of this movie. It's presently showing in select theaters and it's available for stream online on Stan. I'll let you guys know when it's available on Netflix or Amazon. So congratulations to Sudan. And while we're talking about movies, ladies and gentlemen, huge shout out for my mother. <laughs> Ah, my mother, she doesn't even know that I'm my daughter. Look at the news. It's the same. The beautiful Mo Abdu, who signed another deal with Sony Pictures to create content for a global audience. Oh, shit. 
Oh, mommy. If you've seen the wedding party one, wedding party to the Royal Hibiscus Hotel, you've seen her work. And it's not just entertaining and colorful and fun. It's also top-notch work, which puts Africa in amazing light. So this is the second deal that she has with Sony, following a three-year project that was signed in 2018. And this also expands her work on Netflix. We are so proud of Mo Abdu. Mo Abdu is the owner of Ebony Life TV, Ebony Life Film, and Ebony Life Studios, where they create original and inspiring content about progressive Africa. Kudos to you, my mother. We are so proud of you. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So, to the news of the day, Nigerian government is seriously considering replacing BVN, bank verification number, with NIN, national identity number. We need to replace BVN with our NI number. The reason is very clear. BVN is a bank policy, CBN policy, while national identification number is a law. It has been established by law. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I know. Even I, I'm tired, okay? <laughs> it was just like yesterday, 2016, 2017, that the Nigerian government made all their citizens with bank accounts queue in ridiculous lines. It took some people days. It took some people weeks to get their BVN registration done. And for those of us living abroad, you can't even understand the wahala, especially because the registration was only done in a few states of the U.S., for example. So people had to take time off work, which means that many people lost money buy plane tickets book hotels because a lot of people couldn't return on the same day they had to fly to a different state to go and look for registration centers in another state just so that the government doesn't close their bank accounts in nigeria i mean it was tedious in any case they are now saying that all that was a joke it's like what was the point now it is an nin you see my problem is our officials have no vision whatsoever no direction it may be a good idea to use a nin but you don't just wake up one day and say oh we're no longer going left now we're all going right like who, who does that who leads like that why is it so hard to make up your mind before making people go through trouble is it that you just think of how to make life hard for nigerians the nin registration has also been similar to bvn registration the long lines the huge crowd even during this time of covid19 why not make it possible for people to register online if you make it possible for people to register online no one would complain and don't expect those outside of the country to go through the trouble that we went through during the BVN registration, especially during this time of COVID. Mm -mm, the devil is a liar. All I'm saying is get your acts together and stop confusing people. When it comes to data protection regulation, we are in the forefront in Africa today. Oh, wow. Wow. You see that right there is our problem. We're really full of ourselves and we think that we are ahead of everybody, but we are not doing well. There are so many African countries doing better than we're doing. Like The level of our security in all our databases is up, uh, 99.9 percent today or at least minimum 99 percent what's that supposed to be why is he even saying that like see that anyway if we're so sophisticated why can't we transfer the bvn data for this nin why do people have to re-register all over again i mean it's the same data that they are collecting for the bvn registration why not just move that data into the nin registration and people don't have to do it all over and more importantly why does it have to be rushed why not give people six months to one year to migrate or to phase into nin from bvn while our officials are forming out let me tell you guys there are more serious issues to worry about the fact that we presently don't have any reasonable leader in Nigeria. We don't have a president. Why is just there? Like if you go ahead, no offense, Mr. President, in case you're watching, you are just there. And because of lack of leadership, Nigeria is getting close to another civil war. You know, the issue of herdsmen killing innocent people has gotten out of hands. Once again, nobody is saying that all Fulanis in Nigeria are criminals. Let's say that again, because some people take offense. Not all Fulanis are criminals, but it is important to address the fact that some Fulani herdsmen are killing and kidnapping people. A truck filled with weapons and herdsmen was intercepted by Amotekun in Ibadan very recently. Just imagine what would happen in Ibadan if they were not caught. How did they get a whole truck filled with weapons? What were they doing with these weapons in Ibadan? What was their mission? Right now, many people are protesting in different parts of the country. Women are protesting. <laughs> And many people are retaliating by killing the herders' cattle. I don't know if you guys have seen this video, but people are killing cows. Once again, because the government has failed to ensure security in the country, people are taking matters in their own hands, and that could lead to war. It's so disappointing that not only is Buhari not saying anything, we don't even know that we have a president right now, but he's more concerned with his party registration ahead of the next election, 2023 election. Like, he's tweeting about registering. I'm like, who cares? Meanwhile, his spokesperson 
Prosperous of Emadation continues to wow us with his daft statement. It's as if my uncle needs brain surgery. I don't think he's in tune with what is happening at all. It has to do with life and death. People have been maimed and killed. People have been kidnapped right in their homes. Now you have dwelt on the problems now extensively, which I think is the problem in Nigeria. We keep dwelling on the problem and pay little scant attention to solutions. Wow, we're dealing too much on the problem. But I feel, ah, father, I feel ah, how did this happen? When did we get here? As in, exactly what have you swallowed, my brother? How exactly should we pray for you, my brother? Ideas will need to be discussed back and forth and critically assessed. It's not that when an idea comes, immediately you take it and you say, this is the solution. It never happens that way in the country. Do you see any urgency in his uh, stance at all? The complacency of these people, how they are able to sleep at night with all that is going on in the country, baffles me. We've said it over and over again that the government should provide what the herdsmen need for them where they are so they don't have to go to other places and cause the mayhem. But Femi Adesina is saying that we're not talking about the solution. Seriously, but Femi, I know that you want to get your salary, but do you know that being a presidential spokesperson is not for life. Seriously, someday you will no longer be presidential spokesperson. What happened to your conscience? And then, as if the issue of herdsmen is not enough, did you guys hear that a group of people who called themselves the jihadists blew up a power grid in Maiduguri? Mm -hmm. People of Maiduguri have been in the dark since January 26. Some people said uh, it's Boko Haram, it's not jihadist. I can't even keep up anymore. Now we have Boko Haram, we have herdsmen, we have bandits who kidnapped their schoolboys the other time, and now we have jihadists blowing up power grids. Keep in mind that Boko Haram did the same thing in Maiduguri last year. They blew up the power grid in Maiduguri. I say Nigeria is descending into a war. There is fire on the mountain and Buhari doesn't even know it. And as usual, the price of diesel went up in Maiduguri just when people needed it to power their generators and water became very scarce. Water became very, very expensive because people needed light to operate boreholes. So many businesses in Maiduguri have been affected by this power outage. There's just a lot, way too much going on in the country right now. But on a positive note, the court has ordered the central bank to unfreeze the bank accounts of NSAS protesters. As in, that's great news. In fact, young people are saying that they are resuming the NSAS protest at Lekki toll gate if they reopen the toll gate. And speaking of Lekki, by the way, this is a very heartbreaking story, but you guys must know what Lagos state government has done. Do you guys remember the Shanti community next to the Lekki toll gate where some of the residents narrated their experience of what happened on October 20th when soldiers and SAS officers attacked protesters? Hopefully you guys remember that community the story was covered by Premium Times. They made several videos interviewing the people of this community and we featured some of those videos on this show. Well, guess what? On Tuesday of this week, officials of the Lagos State Environmental Task Force went there and gave them a 24-hour notice to leave. Just 24 hours. Oh, by Wednesday morning, by the way, not even up to 24 hours, soldiers, police, and thugs arrived at this community while people were still packing their belongings. And as the bulldozer was pulling down the makeshift houses the thugs were setting the homes and properties on fire policemen chased residents who were trying to salvage their belongings they chased them far into the banks of the lagoon injuring some of them and as the residents mourned the loss of their homes and properties they said that the soldiers and the police laughed at them blaming them for talking to the press about what happened that night at Lekki gate do you see the lens that is willing to go to cover up what happened on October 20th I don't understand these people were barely making ends meet. They didn't have much. And because they talked to the press about what they witnessed, you had to take away their homes? Wow. No more altar of humanity left? I don't understand. We'll keep watching what happens and we'll keep updating you guys. But this is heartbreaking and very, very disappointing. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So before I sign out, a few weeks ago, I advertised some Lagoon Front properties being sold by Lifecard, owned by Grace Ofure, whom I've advertised for several times on this show. And I showed you guys the video of the land by the Lagoon. And a lot of people reached out to her that if they don't have everything up front, can they buy an installment? And now she said to let you guys know that if you want to buy an installment, that's fine. You just have to deposit 1 million naira. You can buy an installment and you can pay either within 
three months or within six months or within 12 months so you can make that arrangement with her the only issue is you don't get the 10 percent discount but because you're coming through adeola you still get a five percent discount if you want to buy in installments so make sure that you contact life card today make sure that you call them or chat with them on their website or just visit them on their instagram page as well or visit grace sofre on instagram and let them know that you're interested in the lagoon front property and that you like to pay in installment so this is the price for those who are able to pay up front they're getting 10 percent discount so also she wanted me to let you know that the launching will be happening on the 27th of this month so if you want to pay everything up front to get a 10 percent discount you have between now and february 27th to pay everything and then you get the 10 percent discount but if you cannot pay everything by february 27th just put down one million naira, and then you can pay the rest over a period of one year or six months or three months so just call her to let her know and like i said the last time that i advertised for her i am not saying that anybody should patronize her by fire by force like i said every single time please do your own research find out if you can find other lagoon front property for this price that will come with the c of o i don't want you to think that i'm forcing you to patronize her because she will pay me for advertising no she will still pay me anyways for adver <laughs> for advertising so i don't want you to feel like i'm forcing you to patronize her but if you've done your research and you feel like you're able to move on with her please make sure that you call her asap because this is about first come first serve by the way miss grace sent me some videos of some of you guys some viewers who decided to patronize her just so other people can hear from them so we're gonna leave you with a compilation of viewers that have patronized grace of talking about their experience hello everyone uh, my name is kester amudo uh, I am currently based in Los Angeles, California. My name is Ali Bissola Ogushola. I live in Baltimore, Maryland, the USA. This is, once again, this is Dr. Davison calling from, you know, Lake Life and Direct from Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, my name is Raymond. I'm a weakness of life card. I live back in the state, but I just came to, to place my property I just brought from life card. The paperwork has been there. It's not the kind of land you buy when you are building houses or Malila will come in and say, hey, you want to pay, make some payment. No. This is a when you when you buy it, if you want to start building it, you will not pay to a Molile. Have a COO, everything's in the, it's intact. December of 2020, I decided to uh, visit home, so I can at least take a look at the physical location where the land is located. It was amazing experience dealing with LifeCard International. Sometime last year, I listened to Adiola, and she introduced a Madam Ofure in one of her videos and a business too. I was like, oh, I would like to have business with this woman. If you're willing to buy, you can see that you're going to have sure. This is not like in America, you bought a land, start paying a property taxes, no, or more paying a mortgage. No, when you buy, you buy it. My documents, everything was made ready uh, before I got there. Uh, it was a great experience uh, doing business with Lifecard International. My brother told me that the place was so, uh, the, the place was developed, it's a good environment, and even I can live there if I decided to. They do all the documents, the paper, and everything was perfect. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button. Until next time, I'm going to see you all later. Peace out.